And the last of the band, Arno, we will be uh, your host tonight because every uh, meetup will be hosted by some one of us. So tonight it's Arno's turn, the first one. So Arno, your turn to present yourself. Thanks, Thomas. <laughs> like, uh, like Thomas and Marcel, I'm super excited to see you tonight. I see a few familiar faces, not only colleagues, but uh, I'm also the organizer of Paris API Meetup. Uh, and so I'm super excited to start this new community. Uh, I joined the screen a year ago, uh, where I'm uh, leading the product. Uh, screen is uh, on a mission to make security simple and accessible to developers. Uh, and so product management has been a hot topic for me on the last year. And so it's a pleasure tonight to be with you, to see so much excitement from you guys. Uh, we couldn't expect to have so much people on the first meetup. And uh, also to welcome uh, our amazing guest tonight, with whom we are going to talk about the product squad, uh, which is a hot topic for me. We recently introduced the squad as screen. And trust me, it's no easy topic. Uh, so you need the help of uh, plenty of people, the perspective, the feedback and I keep iterating because it's no, it's not, a, it's not one on day one. Uh, so tonight we have Cyril, who is leading the product at the mansion. Who knows mansion? <coughs> we have uh, Nicola from Drivey. Who knows Drivey? <coughs> cool. And uh, finally, Benjamin from Blablacar. Who doesn't know Blablacar? <laughs> <laughs> cool, all right. Cool, so yeah, the tonight's topic is uh, the squads. Uh, who is uh, running as squads today? Who has, uh, is working as squads tonight? Raise your hands. Cool. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, still a, a growing topic. Um, who's in uh, product management tonight? Okay. Who's a designer? Who's in design? Okay. A few. Who's in tech? Developer? Cool. Who I'm forgetting? Huh? Okay, Scrum Master is a uh, product management to me, but yeah, who's uh, more operational on the product, like PO, Scrum Master? <laughs> cool, all right, very cool. Um, so here's a, a quick heads up on how uh, things, uh, yeah, I will, uh, yeah. just a quick heads up on the how we will uh, run this session tonight. So uh, we speak about a few topics that uh, I've prepared. Uh, nothing is scripted, and nobody has seen, uh, they, they've seen the script, but they've prepared nothing. Uh, so it will be mostly a chat, uh, and we want you to participate. So we will let you uh, raise questions, uh, so don't hesitate. So Thomas and Laure will take any question you have, so just raise your hand and uh, uh, we'll make sure you get the mic eventually. And so, yeah, the goal is to interact. So feel free to raise any topic, bring your point of view. Uh, they will exchange a lot. Uh, and so, yeah, it's all about uh, interaction tonight. And after let's say 30, 45 minutes, I will ask you which topic you want, uh, would like us to continue with. Uh, I have a few, but uh, obviously uh, we need to, as uh, Laure said, uh, you need to get something out of it. So let's uh, make the best uh, of it. And uh, also we are super happy and proud to be welcomed by Dashlane tonight. I'm a fan of Dashlane that I'm using for like a few years now. I've changed my, the way I, change, uh, I manage my passwords. So super delighted to be here tonight, and uh, Camille will uh, let you know a bit more about uh, Dashlane, uh, Dashlane Paris. Thank you. Thank you. So hi everyone, uh, welcome to Dashlane. We're very happy to be hosting all of you and to be hosting the first uh, edition of Product Stories. Uh, so for those of you who don't know uh, Dashlane, uh, we're a password manager. So uh, as you said, it's gonna change the way you passwords in general. Uh, it's an app that helps you uh, save all your passwords, accounts, personal information, and fills it for you when you browse, uh, so you don't have to remember it. Um, so uh, for those of you who are interested in trying out the product, we have a promo code uh, that you can redeem, uh, product stories here, uh, and <laughs> it's six months free of that, right? <laughs> premium. Uh, and uh, of course, as UPS, we are hiring a senior product manager in Paris, so if you're interested, uh, don't hesitate to come and talk to me or any one of the Dashing folks. Uh, some of us are here tonight, so don't hesitate. And the team is also spread in New York, right? Exactly, the team is spread in New York, Paris, and Lisbon is coming soon. Cool, nice city. Mm -hmm. who's, who's using Dashlane? 
was using a novel password manager who still remember all their password on this uh, on post it. Okay, we come okay. on. Come on, guys. <laughs> Assume. Okay, not post it, maybe. Maybe something like a shared doc or something. Okay, okay. We need to talk. Cool. Uh, let's start uh, with you guys and uh, maybe just do a quick introduction of yourself. Who are you? Uh, when did you join your company? Uh, what's your background? How did you fell in love with product? Uh, so yeah, a bit, uh, a bit more about yourself so we get to know each other to start. Okay, hey guys. Uh, super happy to be here. My name is Nicholas. I'm a chief product officer at uh, Trivy. Um, I joined the adventure uh, seven years ago now. Trivy is a car sharing marketplace, a bit like Airbnb, but for cars. So anyone can list their car to to make some uh, some money. Um, and we have a, a cool technology uh, piece of hardware that we put in the cars so that you can unlock the doors with your phone. So basically, the drive the app when you need a car. Just open the app. You see the cars around you, and with one tap, you book the car. You walk to it. You unlock the doors, and you you get going for a few hours or a few a few days. So a really super convenient way to to get a car. Um, and uh, so my background is uh, in engineering. Um, so I, I I did a, a grand école in uh, engineering. <laughs> But I was always uh, uh, really passionate about coding, so I really started as a as a software uh, developer, basically. And it turned out to become more and more product as the team uh, grew. Uh, so I come from uh, the, the coding side, and uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You want to know more? Uh, anything you want to add? Of course, huh? I'm good. Uh, hello everyone, so my name is Benjamin. Super happy to, to be here and to share insights with you about Squad. Essentially, as Abercar, we've been doing it. We stopped, we start again. So I hope I have like new information to share and I'm happy to get your feedback as well. Uh, to say a bit about myself, I joined Abercar almost five years ago. At that time, we were like 2 p.m. Uh, so I worked on many projects. The team grew, the team like get less people. Now we're scaling again. I'm hiring PMs as well. Uh, and right now I'm working, so as you know, Berlacar, we are the world leading uh, ride sharing platform. So we enable people to share costs and to travel from A to B uh, on long distance trip. So average distance is around 300 kilometers. So we don't do like intercity. We do have a product that we call Blah Blah Lines. That is a test towards like city ride sharing. So work, pickup and, uh, and commuting. But our main product and our main activity is the long distance ride sharing. So it's uh, spread in 22 countries with 65 million members. Uh, across those countries, and uh, the challenge we, we are working on right now is like scaling to those markets even bigger, monetizing those markets, and uh, in some markets, and that's what I'm working on right now, is like how do we integrate the professional offers that we might have on the platform. So in uh, emerging markets, we have a lot of uh, best companies that are actually offering rides on the other car because it enables people to travel, and actually it helps passengers going from A to B and help those companies to pick up their buses. So that's the main, the next challenge for us that we're working on, and that I'm working on. Awesome. Hi everyone. So can you hear me well? Yes. Uh, I'm Cyril. Uh, I'm from Munchen. I'm at Munchen since I think two years, a bit more than two years. Um, I'm responsible of the product team there. Uh, I'm obviously manager of the product manager and the product designer, but I'm also a bit more operational. Uh, because I'm also the kind of the product owner to be defined uh, of uh, one of the squads uh, where I maintain the backlog and conducting the test, I'm still on it. And also, uh, aside of this, uh, obviously I'm also in charge of uh, the product vision. Uh, and our main challenges, uh, challenges now, uh, as we just been acquired by my new desk, which is a PR company, we are currently uh, trying to combine the two products and, and yeah, this is uh, the, the, the main uh, topic now. Um, I'm from a computer science engineering school too, uh, but with a master of project management and business development. Um, and I fell in love with the product when I was a project manager at Teammate, which is a small agency in the north of France uh, at Lille. Um, and actually I was delivering projects to the customer, but we weren't really iterating based on the end users' feedbacks, but more on the customer uh, needs. And 
I was pretty frustrated about it, and this is how I discovered the product world. And I, I moved to Prairie to find my first job as product manager. Uh, uh, I just mentioned as uh, the first product manager in the placement of Bruno, which is now uh, actually. And um, yeah, um, I recruited Siri as a second product manager, and, and now we are here. Awesome. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. That's a fun uh, story. So, I, I used to work at Mention, and they always <laughs> hire by pair. So, the CTO is named Arnaud, I was there. Now we have Cyril, you had Nicolas, and so on. So, fun story about the company. Uh, so the first topic for tonight, so w when you think about Squad, I think uh, the first thing uh, to understand is why Squ Squad came up. So it's not like uh, one day you, c you wake up and you're like, okay, we must do Squad. Okay, it's, uh, there's good reason to move to a Squad organization. Uh, each one of us has a different one. Uh, it's all about the context, the people, the stage of the company, so there's no a single answer. And I'm sure if we run a quick poll here tonight, you all have different reasons to consider squad or already running as, as so. So that's the first topic for tonight. Um, and so before, so yeah, the wh what are the squad in your context? Like uh, if you have to define a squad, what, uh, how would you describe us? Nico, no, you want, uh, you want to go second? That's all right. No, that's okay. Let's do it. Okay. Um, so uh, I'd like to actually explain because the first test we've done with squad, we actually like we took like the Spotify playbook and we did like the whole tribe and squad and chapters and everything by the book. Uh, it lasted like a year and a half and we stopped for reasons that we can go on uh, after. But today the way we, we don't have like squads per se, what we have is, we don't give a name but it's kind of a squad which is a, a regroupment of people, engineering and products and, and design that are working on a specific project. So basically we take people from like the mobile team, the front end team, the back end team and we create a team because we have a project that we need to deliver. Usually the project are stuff that lasts for at least six to 12 months. So this is actually how we, we create those squads as we call them. But basically people are like in a team working on a project, committed to that project, but then they can change to another one if we need more resources on one or if we need less on another. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on our side, when, when we moved as squad, we were actually uh, uh, ending an experience uh, running as uh, one tech team uh, with a Kanban. Uh, and we moved as squad because we needed to have some rhythm um, in the delivery and also some visibility on the planning. Uh, um, also, it, it makes it easier to raise funds. And, and, and um, also, what we needed at that time was to have a closer communication between the specification phases. Um, so we, as product manager, were uh, filling the backlog, uh, and we needed to uh, meet with uh, uh, the CTO Arnaud, which is our backend uh, lead developer. We can say this, and Nico, our front lead developer, so that they can together um, write the technical specification, which helps us to, to estimate the story. And we need this to, to build a, a bit more visibility um, on what will happen just after. Because in a Kanban, in a Kanban methodology, you just fill the backlog, you praise, and you just wait for the future to be out. Cool, cool. Um, so, at, well, for us, uh, we went from uh, two, two employees to uh, 120 employees now. And squads uh, w was very different uh, <laughs> back then and, and, and now. At, at the very beginning, uh, we had no squads and we didn't even know what we were doing. We just wanted to build something useful to people. Uh, and when we hit uh, eight uh, engineers and uh, two PMs, we, we didn't uh, manage to, to make it work. Uh, too hard to, to have good communication. Um, and uh, basically, instead of uh, going faster, we were going slower. So we ended up on the same <laughs> video from Spotify, uh, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you want to, to start to know something about Squad, you should definitely start by reading and uh, watching the, the Spotify uh, material. Um, and the idea is, uh, to me, for Squad is to uh, keep scaling with good uh, output. Um, and the ideal squad, because you never have an ideal squad, but an ideal squad is uh, the right group of people to, uh, to achieve a, a company's goal. Uh, and usually when you're in a tech company, you're, 
the, the, the way you're going to achieve your, your goal is through a website or an app. Uh, uh, and you have to, <coughs> you need some skills to, to achieve <laughs> your, your goals. Uh, so you just, uh, for us, uh, when we create a squad, we just agree on the, on the macro goals and we try to uh, define who we need, wh what type of skills we need inside the squad. And usually for us, that's uh, engineers, uh, front end, back end, mobile, uh, designer, uh, ideally one designer per, per squad, um, a product manager who uh, kind of who is the, the glue, and there's the product owner role that we can uh, uh, that we can talk about, um, and also for us uh, we we think that uh, data is super important, so we have uh, actually data analysts who are inside the, the squad, and these are the the really the tech and the product roles, uh, but. Uh, Right now in our squads, and I'm not saying that we are doing things the right way and <laughs> everyone can do the way he wants, but uh, for us, we also consider people from other departments uh, to be inside the squads. So for instance, we have people from marketing, uh, from uh, customer support, uh, from finance, from ops, because we, we, are, uh, we do car rental, car sharing, and we have to know some people are expert in uh, the car rental business, and we, we need them inside the squad to, to be able to build the right thing. Um, so yeah, sorry, that was a long uh, answer, but uh, um, yeah, that's my answer. Cool, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Plenty of things to say. Um, yeah, but uh, w one thing, uh, so thanks uh, guys for uh, <coughs> sharing your, your perspective on that, as you've seen three different people, three different companies, three different stages, and so three different definitions of squad. Uh, two different maturity in the, the squad implementation as well. Uh, one thing uh, you said, which is important to me, is the autonomy. So as Nicolas said, like, the squad must be able to deliver their mission, their feature, or your scope of the car, in full autonomy. Like uh, They shouldn't be blocked by others. They shouldn't lack a skill to deliver on their mission. And I think that's where it's getting tough, because uh, suddenly you need to mirror all the, the skills to make sure you can, so, uh, before you were running a team with two back-end guys, two front-end guys, and a mobile guy, and suddenly you have three squads, so you need to have uh, three mobile guys, uh, three back-end guys at least, and three front-end guys, so they're fully independent and can run uh, at the pace they, they should. I would just add also that we, we also move as squads because it, it simplifies the communication between the developers and the product managers, and so you are more focused uh, on, on the part of the product you are currently working on, uh, and also the developers know really well why they are working on the part they are working on because they talk every day with the product manager, uh, product owners, scrum master, product manager of this squad. Uh, and uh, yes, this is why we move us too. To, to add on what Cyril was saying, I fully agree. The, the, the first the sign, the signal that made us change from like the organization we had before to squad is really the, like the ownership from the engineering team to what they've been wor they're working on because we really had the feedback that okay, where product is working on something with design and then it gets back to us engineering and we just have to develop it so we're not part of the thinking process and <laughs> we're grouping everyone into a team like and enables the, the knowledge sharing to be shared, like the knowledge to be shared with everyone and to really engineer like feel that they're working on something that they understand and just not something they've been asked to develop. I think that's the real change that you see uh, in the iteration. And it's especially more tough for you guys because you're on a business which is using tech, but where the main purpose is in tech. For example, at Screen, we do a developer tool. So the team who is a party here tonight is the first customer of the product. But for you guys, it requires two main skills, being uh, good at engineering, amazing at engineering, and being good at understanding the business of the company. So it's uh, even more, not saying it's easy for you guys, I'm asking. <laughs> Uh, maybe let's get a bit more concrete and uh, maybe you can uh, name two, three of your squads. Uh, like, uh, what are your squads today? So everyone can understand uh, uh, what's the granularity, how did you slice the team? Uh, and so I think it's a, it's a good, uh, but maybe before jumping to that, do you have any question, guys? We can take a question in French as well, sorry. Yeah. So you, we can also take a question in French if you're not feeling comfortable asking in, uh, in English. So feel free, like, uh, Laura is here, Thomas is there. So rise your hand and uh, we'll pass the mic. Uh, 
Um, thanks, sir, already. And who are you? you? Who are you first? Uh, hey, I'm Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are, but hi, Chris. And the founder of Slate. And, uh, and get on Slate.com. No, <laughs> we have a reading <laughs> coupon. And, no. uh, so, just Benjamin, you talked about the, the time frame of your squad. Yeah. You said it was like six months to one year. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not like Spotify uh, book. And I'm curious about you too. Like, do you put, you know, like limits of time or limits of goals to close squad? Just to that, you said like we, we don't set all the duration in time. It's more like based on the project how it evolves. We really want to make sure that we don't get a squad and working too long on something. Because we got learned that it sometimes doesn't work. We just set off some ideas of how it should last, but it's not like set on the floor. Uh, that's a, a very good question. I have a long answer again, sorry. <laughs> um, we, we went through uh, three iterations uh, for, for our squad at Riley. And uh, the V1 was basically, okay, uh, the, the, the team is too big, so let's split uh, in two. And you are squad A, you are squad B. And just uh, the roadmap is uh, cut in half. And that was uh, our first iteration. Uh, didn't work super well. Um, and. and the, the way we do it now is actually uh, we don't care about the number of uh, people that we have. We try to design our squads uh, with the, the, the underlying mission in mind. And, we, and uh, these are missions that, that last for dozens of years. Well, the, basically, the, for instance, we have one squad who is responsible to acquire as many drivers as possible and to make them find the right car. And this won't change unless we drastically change the business uh, of Derby, which could happen. Um, but we feel like uh, our missions are built to last uh, five years, 10 years. Um, and, uh, and then we, when we did the exercise uh, like two years ago, we, we came up with five core missions that are user facing. And it ended up being five squads. Um, and we didn't have enough people to put inside the squads. Um, it's usually a, a problem when you're uh, trying to hire a lot of uh, engineers, designers. You never have uh, enough people to fill your squad. So we said, okay, fine. Uh, we still uh, have a name for these squads. Uh, they'll, they'll go slower and they won't achieve uh, big goals uh, because they lack people. But at least the mission is there. Uh, so by definition, the, the squad never starts and never ends. It's uh, always the same mission for years and years. But the, the quarterly uh, goals change, and we, uh, we come up with uh, new goals, concrete goals every, every quarter, and we try to staff the squads to, to make them successful. Uh, but for instance, we had a squad with uh, zero developer for uh, two quarters, uh, which was a big problem, but at least we acknowledged uh, to the whole company that we knew that it was an important goal, but we don't have the physical ability to <laughs> to to do stuff in, in these objectives. Uh, and there was still a product owner who had a backlog had to at least be ready for the day when we have the you know, developer. So really, long story short, we, we designed squads to be mission driven. Um, and then the people who are inside the squad, that's just how fast you go. Uh, and then the people inside the squads really are driven by the mission. They decide their own objectives, their own solution. That's a big thing for, uh, in the Spotify uh, video. Uh, you, you have to agree on the objective, and then it's the role of the, the squad to come up with the right solution. They have huge ownership and autonomy. That's super important. Uh, and yeah, sorry, long answer again. You can. Uh, Cut me off if you yeah, want. Yeah, raise your hand if uh, Nicola <laughs> is speaking too much. Like, uh, can be a signal. Uh, stop, Nicola. Yeah, you, you want to say stop, Nicola? Yeah. Is it possible to have an example of goals you uh, uh, on iteration, a quarter, or something like that? Like, is it a goal with a uh, percentage objective of the market, or is it more in future? Uh, so, on our side, it's really uh, about like uh, business objectives, so not, not features. So to give you an example, like right now, we are like, actually we have like three focuses within the company. Like our three main stuff we need to deliver this year. So basically we have like three teams working on those and, uh, and we pick uh, people depending on where the project is. And those three focuses are led by a product manager and they have objectives that they need to achieve. So that's when we stop. What we've seen in the previous model, we had 
have like really like uh, with the squads and stripes is that if you don't sell a, a level, you can have a squad that can last 10 years working on something because they are like 99.1 and they want to reach 99.2, 99.3. But at some point you need to stop because otherwise, when you take a step back, you say, okay, there is a squad working on that topic. It's, it, it's an important one, but the threshold we've reached is actually okay and we need to focus on something else. So that's really how we, we arbitrate between one topic uh, and to another and how we start the team. Yeah, uh, for us, for us, we are not yet um, driven by the ob by the business objectives, but it's coming. Actually, we have a retrospective uh, this Tuesday. Um, we actually are at your first iteration because six months ago we split the tech team, which were uh, 20, I think less than twenty, I would say fifteen developers, uh, into two teams, and we selected a part of the app, and we said, okay, so team A uh, will take the publish part, influence part, and listen. Uh, which is uh, some uh, part of our app, a uh, sub-product kind of. And the second team will take a uh, response report and setup. Um, and so th this was the first iteration. And now, actually, we have a, we have a really clear uh, objective for the fourth uh, quarter, uh, which are at first achieve a, a good retention rate. Uh, we, we have set a, a threshold to, to, to achieve. Uh, the second goal uh, is to make a success uh, on, uh, on the social media uh, management uh, launch. Uh, actually, I didn't present it mentioned before, but we are uh, an online uh, monitoring tool. We what basically what we do is we we listen the web and the social network to know when people are talking about brands, and people use it to measure their e reputation. And the product vision is to um, uh, give the, the the right tools to the marketer um, to improve his uh, mar um, marketing. Um, um, performance online. And we are currently building new tools, uh, such as the publishing tool and the uh, Westpond tool, to, uh, which is the social inbox where you can answer to all your direct messages and stuff. So the, I come back to the business goal. The business goal uh, is to launch publish, launch, web, launch Westpond, and the fourth one is, uh, of course, to integ be integrated uh, smoothly with uh, my news desk, um, which is uh, at Rebus. So four business goals, maybe four squads, I don't know, we'll see it uh, on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I think what's important in uh, what Thierry says is the, the maturity. Like uh, you, you need to learn to walk, and, uh, and then you can start running. But uh, don't start running too early, otherwise uh, you will just crash and, uh, and collapse. So I think that's an uh, important takeaway. Like, uh, maybe uh, the A and B is not the perfect model, but at least it works, and that's a, <coughs> a step in the door of uh, going to, to scratch. Cool. Any, does it answer your question? Cool. You as well, please? It's good? You got yeah, your answer? Awesome. <laughs> I hope you're tweeting about the public story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Any other questions before we. Yeah, that was great. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Jose. Uh, I am a Ruling and as a agile coach at Pax Seguro uh, FinTech from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I have a question for you three uh, regarding what Nicholas has mentioned about uh, the mission. Uh, the how you work today, uh, the, the way you create uh, and or update the, con the, the, the proposal of the missions, do you include the, all the people from for, uh, the, all the teams over Square, for example, and how once uh, the mission is established, how do you communicate then within the teams, the squads? How do, do you monitor the, if the, the key results of this mission is or is accomplished or not? Uh, OKR maybe, or any kind of tool related to uh, strategy. And finally, how do you uh, make improve and make efforts in order to avoid avoid the, to the squats, build things that by the end people won't use. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, yeah, to, just to summarize the question, two questions, how do you measure the performance of squats, basically, I think what was your question, and how do you make sure that the squats keep delivering what user wants, uh, which is kind of linked together, but uh, a different uh, question actually. But uh, also, how, how you build uh, how you build the squad and their mission. We, 
two years ago, we did a, an upside with the product team. Uh, so for a whole day, we we listed all the project and feature <coughs> ideas that uh, we had in all our backlogs everywhere. Uh, so <laughs> it was a long list, um, and we tried to uh, we we had we had squad A and squad B at that time, and we said, okay, so let's let's try to see what the core objectives and which one we can really separate. Uh, and uh, that's, it didn't come uh, out of thin air, you know, it, uh, it was the list of things we wanted to build for the next <coughs> year and, uh, and uh, to, by seeing uh, and, and trying to, to split them, uh, we, we had a lot of post-its, uh, so for a few hours uh, we, we tried different uh, ways to split uh, the, the features ideas and, uh, and it really, the, it, the, the core missions emerged uh, and we were, uh, we all agreed because it was, uh, we, we, we decided as a good product team to, to do it this way. And uh, then it was a matter of uh, uh, making sure that it was okay for the other departments, for marketing, <laughs> customer support, finance. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that wasn't super easy at the beginning, uh, but uh, with the help of the Spotify video uh, <laughs> and lots of uh, talking, uh, uh, everyone agreed. On the on the mission, um, and then the other performance. Questions. Performance. We do use uh, OKRs, so short version. Uh, we every quarter we we, uh, we set goals for the whole company. Um, not everything that we want to do, but OKRs are really about setting the the thing you don't want to miss, the thing that are super important as a company, um, and and then we let each squad. Uh, decide how they can um, um, well, uh, impact and, uh, and help the company reach these goals. So every squad designed its own set of OKRs. Tactical OKRs. And OKRs, because I guess people don't know what OKRs are. Uh, it's from uh, Google and even from Intel. Uh, it's it's uh, objectives and key results. So basically it says uh, you have to agree on the direction, which is the objective, but maybe you, you'll, uh, you'll take 10 years to reach that objective. So key results are something that is measurable, uh, and that's uh, how far you want to go in that direction for the next quarter or next year or whatever. So OKRs are a great way to align everyone on the same objective and try to come up with a way to measure the outcome that you, you'd like to have, and we have uh, OKRs at the company level, then at the squad level, and we we let them uh, come up with the solutions. And uh, if uh, they come up with bad solutions, uh, then they 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 realize it and they get better and better. So that's uh, that's the way you do. Uh, like autonomy is super important. It's that's the way you you motivate people. You don't micromanage. You let them learn from their mistakes. And if if uh, the mistake is that user don't use. Uh, the product, uh, that's a big mistake. They should talk to users, <laughs> they should do res research, uh, user testing and stuff, so. <coughs> do you want to add on that? Does it answer your basic question? Or do you want to add on that or should we move on? That flies in okay. Um Another big topic for tonight, so we just mentioned OKR, OKR which was on my list already. I think what's important now, so we so far, we understood a bit uh, why squads are we, they, those guys build the squad. Um, and so now it's about delivering, like a squad. The, the main trigger, you mentioned it, is velocity, pace, pace of delivery. Um, and so uh, for me, it's an important topic because uh, uh, that's one of the key reasons why you want to move to that organization. So maybe one of my first question is, you are all in product management today. As you say, Siri, you may be more operational today. For you, you guys, you manage a team of uh, uh, product guys as well. How do you, what's your day-to-day -day look like? Like, uh, how do you interact with the squad? Uh, you mentioned a lot about autonomy. Uh, what's the level of discussion you have? Are you only talking about OKR with them? So yeah, what's the day-to-day -day as a product manager working with squad is looking like? Good question. <laughs> uh, I guess on my side, it's really like using, so we are kind of testing OKRs, but in a way we like set all objectives that we want to achieve within the quarter. And I think that's the, the 
scale that I'm using to discuss with people, uh, like with the engineer manager or the product manager, which is like on that objective, how, where do we stand and what's working on? I think that's the right tool that we need to, to communicate. Um, and then I think that uh, with the engineer, engineering team, uh, there's always like one engineer that is taking probably the lead or an engineering manager is more the person I'm going to talk to. But then within the team, they just, I don't interact that much with them. Yeah, so you're, you're interacting with all the squads, but exactly. don't form a very high level. Exactly. Okay, cool. Cool. Thierry, on the other. For me, it's a bit different. Um, actually, on the day, so the, the day starts with a stand up. Um, with a, I, I personally do the stand up for the two teams, um, uh, for the two squads, even if say there is also a, a present on his squad um, uh, daily stand up. I'm just doing this just to, to be informed of, of uh, what, 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 uh, at, uh, what uh, I would say, um, what, what is the uh, ongoing of the, the stories and, uh, and to be aware of uh, the planning. Uh, this is on the day over. Uh, I'm also producing the, the backlog of the of the next uh, sprints for my team and uh, helping uh, Sale to, to also uh, uh, build his backlog for the next sprints of the other squad. Um, it's it's a bit uh, huge in terms of uh, of time, uh, and I'm currently uh, searching for another product manager to replace me in the squad uh, because on a, on a week level, um, I also need to do a lot of user research. Um, uh, we call a lot of a ton of customer. Uh, we hear the listen to the sales to the customer success people. Uh, we list uh, actually we have built a feature um, uh, a feedback loop that helps us, that helps us to prioritize uh, uh, problems to solve and features to prioritize. And also we lead the the, the product designer uh, in the the user uh, um, tests and the UI uh, of the next features that will finally come in the backlog and the sprints. Uh, so yes, it's a, a bit operational uh, by uh, looking at where the, the devs are uh, to answer the questions, uh, a bit about uh, wireframing uh, and uh, helping the designers and a bit of like, uh, uh, vision and research um, uh, on, uh, during the week. So very hands on on the product. Yes. Yeah, cool. And, and one question because uh, at Drivey, we decided to, to sit together by squads, so we don't have the, the developers uh, in one part of the, uh, the HQ and then the designers and the data. And, uh, we really uh, sit together, so usually between uh, three to six people uh, with uh, the PM, developers, designers, data, and ideally, uh, it, it's, uh, it's really the way it is, um, Today we have people that belong to several squads at the same time, so that's not ideal. But still, we really the 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 who sits where is designed to maximize the proximity to your to your squad. And I think that's super interesting because that's that has so much uh, impact on uh, how people uh, work together, and uh, that's a big part of the the day to day uh, for, for us at Drivey. But uh, maybe that's not the case everywhere. So. Um, for, for us, so imagine a big open space where all the tech and the product and the designers are. Uh, we have three big tables. Uh, two of these tables, uh, the two at the opposite of the room, uh, are for each one for one squad. And uh, the two PM are with their squad. So I am with on the my squad table, and the other PM is at his squad table. And in the middle, uh, you can find the designers <laughs> and <laughs> the CTO, our VP Engineering, which is now on, uh, uh, actually, yes, uh, I forgot to say that when we moved from Kanban to Squads, we hired the VP Engineering to lead this move and also to manage or close it the developer uh, because this was also a need uh, from us. Um, so as we do, uh, we had the squads like all sitting on the same bench and as we moved like to more like uh, teams organized around the objectives of the the product won't deliver. We've actually regrouped the uh, people based on their competencies. So we have like all the iOS developers on one bench. So we have like 670 people in the engineering team. So we have all iOS on one bench, all Android on one bench. The front end guys that are working on a, a migration project are all sitting together. And then the back end guys are all close together. NPM, we, s we have seats that we, where we stand, we are close to our designers because we're working first with designers. But then we cannot move on depending on where we stand the projects. And what we have is like stand up, but on a project. So basically on the morning, you get like a 
to iOS and Android, uh, the back end, the front end, that are working on the project at the moment, or rebooting, and then moving back to their bench. It works, um, and I think we've done that, but we break up for that after, but it's because we also saw like negative effect of the squads and tribes with the chapter traffic, because basically we cannot last the, the proximity within one type of resources and one type of job, where basically you're an iOS guy and actually you meet your iOS peers once a week, or actually when you're hosting together, you can actually solve some issues on your platform way more, way faster and way easier. Cool, yeah, yeah that's uh, indeed a topic. University just script, huh? Remember. Um, cool. Let's. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, let's talk about the hard things now. Um, so, first question is: Do you feel it really uh, enable you to deliver faster and better at the end of the day? So maybe that's more a question for you, uh, Benjamin and uh, Nicolas, because you're still uh, transitioning for now. But uh, how does it feel? I think you, s you save time. I don't think if you save time in like the coding, I, I don't know exactly if you save time. What I know that you save time on is like sharing the information, getting people understanding what they're working on, and like seeing the benefit of what they're working. And I think you save a lot of time because before it was like you're PM, you do the research, you do the design, then you come to engineers and you present. When everyone is talking all day long about the project, then when you share something, it's not new, it's not something you've been like exposed to. So you save time on, on that, I would say. And uh, I remember when we had the squad A and B, um, my, our VP engineering uh, gave me the, the stats of the number of commits we, we have on the, our GitHub uh, repo. And the day that we launched the squad A and B, the, the number of commits doubled. So it was like, yes, you go <coughs> twice as fast. That's, <laughs> that's great. So indeed, we shipped way more features and uh, everyone was uh, super happy, but then it's, it, the, the quality-wise, they always change topics uh, yeah. every, every month, uh, every quarter. They, they, they worked on the one part of the product and they've changed completely and they never uh, really uh, had time to go deep enough in, a, in one particular problem. Uh, so when we went to the, our second and third iteration of Squad uh, with a, a really uh, stable mission, uh, that's where we had both speed and quality, they really, uh, the, the whole squad, uh, so PM, but also engineer, designer, data, they, and, and uh, business, uh, marketing, uh, they came up with, a, 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 well, they had a deeper understanding of the problem, they came up with solutions that sometimes took months to really materialize, uh, because sometimes you have a great idea, but you don't have the bandwidth to build it now, so you just uh, forget about it, and uh, if you have to switch to something else, you really forget about it, uh, that's lost. So that's a uh, brain power that is lost. Uh, and when we have a stable mission, uh, we really noticed after maybe six months of uh, having a squad with a stable mission, that the, the quality was skyrocketing. Uh, we, we came up with a, a better features, uh, um, um, and, and it, it showed us also in the, in the matrix, in our business metrics. So Really, I, I think that's, uh, um, it, it took a lot of time and, and squads really helped to scale in the right way. Cool. Thierry, you want to add something or? Um, for us, so we didn't like to work the, the velocity, I would say, but yes, we win a lot of, we win a lot of time by syncing the people in the squad, by um, uh, explaining them the program. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, short answer. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think uh, I remember. So a second life or tonight is that uh, this idea of talking about squad started in a bar with uh, Cyril and Nicolas. So some of the stories you had tonight were already talked about them. So and I remember you mentioned a fun thing is that uh, now you have a hard time moving people from squad to squad, and so people are so linked, bind, bound to their squad, but it's hard to say okay. But you know, it's been a long time you're working on that topic, maybe you should discover another thing, and so, yeah, but uh, I remember it was an interesting fact there yeah, yeah. as well. Um, okay, so that's one, uh, thank you guys for answering that one. The second one is uh, that you partly answered, but uh, do you really feel like it helps your, one thing that uh, struck me when we talk about the squad is, 
when you talk generally, you hear about product and engineering. That's the old way to, to split uh, the teams. And uh, when you hear those guys talking, they don't really mention engineering tonight. They say, so for example, you say we met with the product team and suddenly you say, and the other team, marketing, financial, apps, and there's no more engineering uh, per se. Of course, there's engineering activities. And so, um, uh, do you really feel at the end of the day that uh, you manage to help your engineering team, so the people with engineering skills first, to really be empowered on a mission, like really come up to you and say, hey Nicolas, I think we should do X uh, for Drive V because I think it will drive Y and uh, help the business grow by Z. Uh, do, you feel, do you feel that? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, uh, engineering is a <laughs> Is a big part of the of the squad, and uh, maybe I don't mention it because uh, no, it's, it's, it's a given. Right. It's a given. I think we started squad because product people and tech people were already working together. So it wasn't the case with business people. So that's, that was an addition later on. Um, but uh, since we've uh, since we have had a squad, uh, yeah, the, the the engineers are super uh, motivated. They, they understand the problem that uh, <laughs> we're trying to solve. So. Uh, they come up with uh, the great solutions. So that's definitely uh, great for everyone because they are more uh, invested, uh, they have more impact, and the product is better. So that's really the, the way to go. And for instance, uh, so we have the, the classic uh, rituals, uh, day stand up and things like that. We also do uh, off-site. Uh, so once every quarter, uh, the whole squad, each squad, uh, organizes uh, an offsite, so they go away from Drive HQ. They rent some some Airbnb or whatever, uh, and they for a full day they they uh, talk about what problems they want to solve uh, the next few months and which solutions, how what feature we could build to uh, to achieve uh, to to solve this problem. Um, uh, so, for instance, we have a squad whose, whose mission is to uh, improve the, 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 the conversion when you want to find a, a, a car. Uh, so they came up with the idea of uh, uh, like storing the, the credit card information uh, to really speed up uh, the, the, the payment uh, uh, phase. So you, you have that everywhere in uh, Uber, Deliveroo. And, uh, but they came up with the idea uh, uh, when we just agreed that uh, we wanted to increase conversion for repeat users. So um, that's uh, the, the, the engineers talked about, talked about this. There was a huge security issue because we were uh, afraid that uh, someone might uh, steal your uh, drivey password and uh, log in on, uh, um, on the app, uh, use your uh, credit card that is already stored and, and steal a car basically with just your, your password. So that's a concrete example of a, <laughs> a problem we, we had to face. And uh, uh, at first we thought that we had to implement a two-state authentication uh, to really uh, have a great security inside our app. And then the engineers uh, came up with the idea of just uh, uh, like a quick hack that took uh, two hours. Uh, you just, uh, you can't reuse uh, your store credit card on a new device. So instead of spending two months building a, a great security feature, we spent two hours uh, building a quick hack, but they came up with it. And that's not the PM, that's not the designer, that's not the, the top management. So uh, that's an example of, uh, of uh, engineers uh, having a big impact on the roadmap. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. but the manual and, and, and that what I see is that we get way more challenged by engineers when everything we present to them. Like, really like it's night, day and night. Uh, so that's really great because then the product quality as you're seeing is getting way higher because they came up with solutions, they came up with ideas. And the fun fact we had is when we started to have teams working on the on landing page, the, the day before we started like the kickoff, we received like a deck done by like some engineers, like it was like 50 or 60 slides about what they believe landing page should be. And when you receive that, like okay, so they have everything in their brain and because we're just asking them to do stuff, they don't share that. So that was really like a great change. Cool. Okay. Uh, attention, we call the, the, the product and tech team the protect team. Right now. <laughs> uh, uh, 
It's still in the transition, right? Yeah, it's in the transition. So we say now we are a product team. No, the, we have a protect slide uh, uh, on the weekly basis because we do a, a weekly retrospective at the end of the week and we just um, uh, report uh, as the same team like uh, the, the product goals uh, on the weekly basis and, and the, the, the engineering goals are the same for us. Uh, we have also a, a product research slide so that we will know everybody in the company knows that we are uh, investigating this kind of problem with the customers and if so the customers come to the CS they are aware about it. Um, but yes. CS customer okay. success. It's not Counter Strike. Or <laughs> <anything else. laughs> cool. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Again. So before, so we are forty-five minutes in, I think. Uh, as promised, uh, it's up to you now to, to choose the topic. Uh, let's, uh, guys. Are you feeling okay to continue? <laughs> yeah, of course, sure. you're feeling a part of a round of uh, let's say 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, you have a question? question. Oh. If we manage the lead in the swag, I mean by that uh, it's uh, automatically understood that the code API is right of the lead for the swag, by most of the code I just mentioned about. And as you say, the engineering guys are sometimes very slow in the solution. So how do you manage the different swag? Do you, do you try to understand, okay, this swag is Sortie of the R, how do you define leadership of uh, Square? Great question, I think. Uh, it's an important topic, thanks. I can maybe start, it, it would be, uh, uh, I think, quick. Uh, for us, the, the two PM and the two main, because actually we have two squads, this, these are the, the main squads, and the, the lead is given by the, the product manager, but we have also have a ops team, a mobile team, um, and, and here there is no product manager, but there is still project, and here on, on this, Smaller squad, uh, the lead is uh, an engineering guy. So, yeah. in, in, I think that in the in the technical squad, uh, the product manager can be here to answer question and to challenge if he is a technical guy. Uh, but uh, a, a, a developer can be a lead of the squad uh, of the technical squad. Uh, at Revy, we have we have two types of squads: uh, the ones that are uh, really user facing, uh, and the ones that are more uh, like support squads, uh, so we have a, uh, when I said that we had five squads, th th these were uh, user facing squads, so they have uh, objectives to uh, acquire more users, improve conversion, uh, get more advisors, get more owners, uh, um, and we have support squads to, to enable the squads to, to, to work in good conditions, so we have a, a squad who's responsible to, to have a, a great software architecture so the really uh, like a good code quality uh, squad who who is responsible for the, the infrastructure like the DevOps side, uh, one for the data pipeline, so and so on. Uh, and in these tech squads, the lead the lead is uh, an engineer, and there's actually no product, uh, not no product manager. There's a product owner role, but then it's not uh, that's an engineer who does it. Um, and then the user facing squads. In the past, the, the, the leadership was usually the product manager because he like, is the glue between uh, <laughs> tech, uh, UX, and, and business. But what's interesting that last year, we actually uh, created a new role, and uh, uh, I'm not saying that's the right way to do it, but we, we call it a squad lead. Um, and each user facing squad has a squad lead who owns the objectives. To, to we, we consider our user-facing squads to be mini startups, so they have a mission, uh, and they have complete ownership, so they, they, they own the kind of feature they want to build, but they also own the objectives. So uh, acquire uh, uh, X more uh, uh, owners, uh, improve conversion by uh, X, and in these squads, uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes the leadership is the, the product manager, Sometimes it's the person from marketing, so we have a we have a squad where the, the the squad lead is someone from the marketing department, but he is integrated inside the squad, so he works uh, day to day with the with the squad. He's not product manager; he works with the product manager, and uh, that's uh, yeah, that's 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 working pretty well. There are some uh, pros and cons, but uh, we 
we take this kind of decision uh, case by case. So there, there's no general rule, uh, but the, the person who owns the objectives must understand uh, the like every <laughs> every area that is necessary for the squad to be su successful. I have a question about um, features that don't necessarily fit the squad. Um, so maybe, you know, we're, we're at Flight, uh, so a pretty small startup and we have lots of ideas and sometimes they don't, some these ideas don't necessarily deserve to be a squad. Um, and it could be something also that like marketing will push um, and so they don't necessarily enter in the process. Uh, so I wonder, I'm sure you guys also have that uh, and I wonder how you deal with that. Right now on our side, as we are like those puff issues that the company is working on, basically there is a roadmap and objective that need to be achieved around that focus. And everything that is not part of that is not considered. <laughs> and I think we've been like super, and actually it's like we've been super radical about saying like, okay, for example, like we have a crappy messaging system, like super crappy and uh, like a real shame on what we have. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and just we, we know it's crappy, but because it's not gonna help achieving one of our objective and focus, we don't work on it. We fix bugs, obviously, but we don't like, on win. we have like tons of ideas to improve it, but we know that to achieve our business objective, we need to deliver those projects and we focus on that. And at some point, maybe you reach that feature because you need to implement to improve it, but if not, we just don't work on it. And I think the radicality we've created, like it is helping us focus. It also, on other teams, because you tell them, at some point you tell them, why do you want to work, why do you want us to work on that? If that's not helping one of the focus of the company. And then you make sure that every team actually in the company is really like obsessed by the focus that you have. I think it's especially important because us product people tend to be, oh, I have this idea, oh, I, I want to do that, oh, we could uh, try X. And so you unfocus uh, your team every time you push uh, such a, so I think it's important uh, to be strict. Like, uh, um, so I guess it's the problematic of a startup versus larger, you know, startup. <laughs> uh, how do you still, you know, like, when you look back at the past years at Labacap, do you still think that you drive innovation? And typically, you know, like these new things that you launch, you talked about blah, blah, line. How do you launch them? Because they don't hit the initial squads, right? Yeah. So, uh, if, you, if we think that it's a focus, then we create the team to do it. And I think blah, blah, line was about that. Like, we want to get a shot at that. So we created a team on its own that started working on that, acting like a squad. And you know, if tomorrow Berlin is like needs more resources, we may close another team that is working on a project that has reached a level, or we put the resources there, or we change to something else. So it's really about like, if we believe that there is something to be done, then we allocate the right resources there. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree with that, uh, but for really tiny uh, modifications, that's another story, I think. But for big projects, I think, I agree with the, this uh, way of uh, doing things, and we do the same at Drivey. But for tiny things, like there's, there's a typo in on that page, or, uh, we, <laughs> we tried many different things, and, and now we have a Slack channel where it's called the Ask a Squad. So you can just, <laughs> okay, I, I don't know, I don't care about your squad, huh? I just want this typo to be fixed, or this button, this, uh, and uh, they just describe their problem, and we try to dispatch them to the right uh, squad. Uh, but there's no guarantee. Uh, it's a kind of a request. Uh, and what we tell people from all departments is that uh, if uh, sometimes they, they don't uh, like the request uh, uh, paradigm, <laughs> they want something done. So we tell them uh, if it's aligned with uh, the goals of a squad, then yeah, go ahead and help us build the roadmap. Uh, so. If it's marketing, then have someone from marketing come in the squad and we'll work uh, with you. And uh, don't come up with a solution. Explain to us what your problem is and we'll come up with the right solution. So that's super important, I think. To add on that, we created a team, a, bit like a team like that that is called the run team. So basically you have every engineer that is doing the shift in the team. So every two weeks we change engineers in that team. So everyone is doing run. And run is mostly like bug corrections and those very specific tiny changes 
but the guys are super radical about, okay, that is a new feature, so it needs like something new, so we don't do it. It's more like <coughs> fixing stuff or the small improvement. Are you on words than improvement? <laughs> and what's the in-between, you know, like the small features that could make like the whole company shift in one year? And I know that it's, it's a reflex from smaller companies, but still, you know, like companies have shifted in the past because of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it seems like you just don't do them. No, that's, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you have focus, and that focus might need to completely change the way your product is built, if you believe into it, and we've proven that there is something to be done, then we allocate the team. One example is that if you take our business model in France, we take a fee out of each booking. So every time you book a Berber car, the driver puts that 20, you pay 25, and you get five. Uh, in some in the Eastern Europe and emerging market, that model doesn't work mostly because people just don't pay online; they pay cash. So how do you make money out of cash model? And we like start we like tested I don't know four or five different models, and basically we had a team that was okay. We need to find a way to monetize. So through innovation, find a way to to find the right model to monetize, and we tested like the credits, we tested like uh, uh, many stuff, and right now the one we have that is working is that we have a subscription. So you pay a monthly or a weekly fee online, and then you can pay cash, and that came up because we had a team that was focusing on, okay, how do I find the right model to monetize those markets? Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to add on that, uh, we have, at Ravi, we have two ways to, to deal with that. Uh, for instance, uh, early this year, we wanted to revamp completely our price structure uh, because in the past you had to say, okay, I want a car for these dates and uh, you, you had to estimate the, the distance that you were going to do and that's too much friction, uh, it's too complex. So we wanted to remove that, but that's a super complex problem and no squad wanted to do it, uh, but the, the whole company knew that it, it needed to be done. So we... <laughs> We created a squad that just for uh, uh, the the needed time, uh, so the six months, which is uh, the only exception to the rule. So we agree to to have uh, one exception, and and the other way that we deal with that because uh, if you had to if you have to spin up a a, a temporary squad uh, every time you want to do a, a feature that <laughs> doesn't work. Uh, so actually, every quarter when we work on the roadmap, we have one or two medium feature that no one no one wants to do because that's not really aligned with their core focus and that's uh, that's what we call the cross squads project <laughs> 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 and uh, that's actually my role to to try and identify who should do it uh, and uh, even if they don't agree uh, we uh, we tell them, come on, we, we gotta do it. So. <laughs> it feels like a punishment. No? Like, you guys haven't been cool in the last quarter. You're no, going to no, take a video feature. No, because we know that no organi organization is perfect. So you, you have to, to have exceptions. Uh, the, the goal is to be, uh, to have a, the, the lightest framework to, to handle 80% of, uh, of the, the life cycle of uh, your own map. Um, and I think that's what squads uh, manage to do. They're pretty light and simple, and it works really well 80% of the time. And the 20 other percent, uh, you have to, to be pragmatic and uh, allow exceptions. Awesome, I think uh, Thomas just told me the... No, no, we have a question. Ah, yeah, well, okay. Yeah. Uh, cool, so you want the mic. Yeah. Here we go. Hi. Where, where is and who manage the Q&A, the reset of uh, every feature you, you deliver, which was, uh, of my experience, is the biggest pain in product. And uh, so how, how is it managed in, uh, like in a four squad organization or a three squad organization? So on our side, it's engineering that is in the Q&A. Engineering, so engineers are doing are doing the tests, okay. uh, and we have a QA team that is uh, doing manual testing when it's new and automatizing what is new so that it gets automated and then it no longer has to be tested manually. So it's out of the squad. Right? It's like yeah, you actually yeah, you get like we have some like it's in the squad because the engineer is coding, he's testing what he has what he has done, 
And really, like the best way we we changed that because before, like PM were doing a lot of testing, and the, the best way we found to make sure that engineers were testing their feature is that every time the ticket was like uh, to validate, we had the question, okay, we don't have time to test, so we push to prep. And when you ask that question to engineers, you see in the eyes, is the guy has tested or not? Because <laughs> the guy is like, a, okay, I'm gonna test a bit more, and then you, can, okay, <laughs> you do that like for two months, and then you understand that actually the guy is there. Now they, every time they're testing, and you have the QA team that is shifting from one team to another to help when there, there is automated test to be done. Um, at Ravi, we're not super good at QA, so uh, I'm not sure you should uh, do that. But are you good at quality? Because at the end of the day, it's about that. Do you feel the we're quality is there? It's always a trade-off with speed. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, we invested a lot in uh, automated tests um, from the, the, the beginning. So that's uh, part of the culture. The, the, the engineers uh, from the squad have to write tests, uh, unit tests, integration tests. Uh, uh, that solves part <laughs> of, the, of the issue. And then uh, QA is hard. Uh, we, we, we tell squads that they, they have to do it. Uh, usually it's the PM, but they, we, we don't have the, the perfect answer. Uh, we, we do QA sessions for big features, but for small stuff, we don't do anything. Uh, but there's no playbook. <laughs> uh, and uh, what we do is uh, we just do as little as possible, uh, and when it breaks, when we are not happy with uh, the quality of a feature, we talk about it. Uh, so it's that's super important actually that you do a post mortem uh, to to avoid uh, to do the same mistake again for the same kind of feature, uh, um, and we learn from it. We don't have a, each squad does it differently, uh, so yeah, that's not uh, that's not perfect. We want to improve on that. Yeah, for, for us, it's uh, we don't have a QA uh, for now. It's a big topic uh, at our company. So if, if you have uh, by chance a solution for it, uh, or uh, we could have a chat later, uh, we are hiring a QA manager actually right now. <laughs> um, uh, in each squad, so the, the tech people are in charge of the of the the test, the unit tests, and uh, we don't have an automated way to do to conduct tests for functional testing with the app. Uh, this is the, the PM, which is mostly the in, in charge of this at the end. But uh, we we ask, uh, of course, the developer to do it uh, while developing the feature. Uh, you know, the solution we are thinking about and uh, um, is maybe having a, a, a core team with a QA uh, uh, autom automation, uh, which is leading QA analysts in the in the user squads. So that QA analysts are manually testing the, the apps and, and writing a, in a book all the tests that they have done, and the QA uh, automate, auto, automation will uh, automate those tests. Um, uh, this is one of the one of the solutions. I think there, there is a lot, and we are currently interviewing a lot of data engineering in Paris to have the, all the user solution and to choose the one that will fit the most with us and the, the people that will uh, join the company. I may uh, just uh, add on that because I think I have a strong opinion on that topic. Uh, I think the moment you introduce QA, you need to be clear on what quality means in your company. Otherwise, you're giving up and saying, oh, you see that person here? He's going to be in charge of quality right now. And so first build that culture of quality, like make everyone responsible of quality. Uh, like uh, when we work at screen, uh, I'm not the QA guy. So like hearing that it's a PM up to test I don't like that uh, idea so much. I think it's a part of the team work. And I differentiate the test, the technical test that the, the engineers are doing and are working on the quality of the code and make sure it works as it should. We scale, as no bug, as no security flaws, etc. And the product test, like did I put myself in the shoe of a user and that feature, does this feature end to end make sense? Because I think when you're developing something, and I used to be a developer, you, your head's down in your feature and suddenly you, you're bogged down and you completely forget about the feature itself. So yeah, step back on that. And uh, so once you build that uh, cult the culture of quality, next you can say, okay, now we understand we need more bandwidth, more resources, introduce QA as a way to extend the quality and not as a way to say, okay, quality is a topic. It's like design, you know, Romain, Romain is here. It's a big topic for us. Design is not the job of Romain. The, the design is the job of the team. 
and at some point the Roman is here to extend the power of the team to make better design. Yeah. I think that's exactly why we are currently searching for a QA manager to introduce this sculpture and to set the border um, also to, to not uh, remove the responsibility of the tech team. Uh, cool. Sorry, that was a, a one off. Hi. So, from what I understand from what you squad described, so it looks like what was going to the film where I work for a few months. So, I have two questions for you guys to have some advice from your experience. The first one is that even if we are working as squad, sometimes we it's great if the team member of the squad because we have all the information, but it's still confusing for other business, for example, for example, compliance, legal, or CDC or such information. So if you have any advice, maybe because you can actually say that maybe it's time to integrate more uh, competence in the squad. So if you have more advice for uh, an integrated difficult shape with that. And the other question is, uh, from what I understand from Spotify squad, it's great to have some autonomy, but uh, we still have to create some commitment between the squad. So uh, if you have some advice to have to create commitment in your squad, your films, it should, should be great. And um, one last thing about communication is uh, we also have project manager and work with Wiz. Uh, I realize that sometimes it's not easy to know what they're working on. So we are doing some DE with the team members of the squad. So do you have some process to share information uh, between the squad? Thanks a lot. That's a good question. Who wants to go? Um, so, f first question about how do you uh, have everyone in the company understand uh, what the squads are and uh, how to talk to them? That's a very good question. And uh, uh, when it was uh, squad A and B, uh, <laughs> it was hard to explain uh, what <laughs> what they were doing because it changed uh, every time. Uh, but for the past uh, almost two years, we've had uh, stable missions. So. Actually, that's part of my job. I uh, <laughs> I really uh, uh, explain and then re I repeat often uh, uh, that, uh, that the, the name and the mission of each squad to to everyone, and even in the onboarding of new people in the company, uh, that's one of the first thing that we explain because that's that's almost as important as the org chart of the company. Um, so. Uh, that's that's uh, some work, but uh, that's uh, that's a good uh, ROI. <laughs> we we invest a lot of time, but that's uh, that's very important. Um, then the third question was also on communication yeah, between, between squads. Squad. Between communication and next commitment. Uh, so on communication, um, we our squads are uh, eighty percent autonomous. So the eighty percent of the time they work uh, alone. <laughs> And so they're focused. And 20% of the time, they have to work with other squads. Uh, um, so they, they, they have to, to, to talk <laughs> each other, with each other and, and exchange information. But it's not the, the right way to really exchange information. So we try to have, uh, we have every two weeks, we have a, what we call a demo day. Uh, we, every squad uh, shows what they built for the past two weeks. And by showing really uh, not slide with the uh, bullet points, really uh, screenshots of the features that we that they just built. Uh, that's actually a pretty, that works pretty well. Uh, that's a picture is worth a, a thousand words. Uh, and and in a, so the meeting is uh, 40 minutes long. Um, we have uh, the five squad, the five user facing squads who uh, show what they built and why. And 40 minutes every two weeks. And we find that uh, that's a great way to to understand who does what for inside the tech and product uh, team, and then outside of the team, that's way more challenging. Uh, we have uh, different ways. We we have a Slack channel uh, called uh, upcoming releases, releases uh, where we uh, every squad uh, 